Hey guys and gals, welcome back to another episode of the Constructive Liberty Podcast. I don't do many live streams on the Constructive Liberty, but when you have somebody like Amy Dingman who wants to come on the podcast, you do it. So Amy, last time you were on the podcast, which was, I'm not even sure when, I just looked it up. I pulled the episode up a second ago. It was uh, June 10th, 2022. We talked about being brave versus being smart. Yeah. And kind of how the decisions that we make in life are sometimes brave, sometimes smart, and kind of what the difference is. Yeah. And it wasn't long after that that you made some pretty big changes in your life. And I think that's what we're going to talk about tonight. But anyway, if somebody has not heard of you before this point, which I don't know how they could have not, why don't you give just a little introduction and then we'll jump into today's topic. We'll jump into it. So I am Amy Dingman. I run the site of farmishkindoflife.com and it's a podcast and it's a YouTube channel and it, it's all the things. I live in central Minnesota on a five acre homestead where we have chickens and ducks and pigs and turkeys and we're getting rabbits this year. Um, I live here with my family and we just hang out and live life and, and do the things. We've been here awesome. since 2011, I think. So we have a big, <laughs> giant red barn that was built in 1918. And it's if you've seen the barn, it's beautiful. That's what everybody talks about. So, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. And it's still yeah. standing? Like It is still good? standing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I see still. so many old barns that, yeah. like, they're just blown over and not yeah. taken care of. And I, yeah. I wish people would do what it takes to, like, save the, save the yeah. ancient buildings. But... I guess that's not real ancient, but a hundred years is pretty old. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> it's uh, it, it needs some work. It it needs a roof, you know, it's starting to leak a little. So, you know, we have some things we need to do, but yeah, it is so cool yeah. that it's still standing and usable. So. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That's, that's super cool. What's, uh, what's some of the favorite animals that you have on the farm right now? Uh, well, right now all we have is chickens and ducks. Um, took a little break last year, which yeah. we'll get into. But yeah, so chickens and ducks <laughs> is all we have right now. We actually have a bunch of little uh, chicks that are hatching right now in our incubator. They're making so much noise. So uh, that's the excitement in the house right now. But um, pigs are actually my favorite animal that we keep on the farm, oddly cool. enough. Um, yeah. I didn't want pigs when we moved here and we got <laughs> pigs and now they're my favorite animal. So isn't that funny it, how that works out? <laughs> it is. It, it's always interesting how, you know, the things that you want really bad oftentimes end up being the thing that you hate the most. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the ones that you're like, I'm not sure I want to get into that. You love it. Yeah. What is it that, what is it in particular that you love about pigs? Oh, their personalities. They just, they have such cool personalities and, and they give us bacon. So oh, yeah. that, that's the best know? part. <laughs> you can't, yeah. I mean, if you get bacon out of the deal, then, you know, it's not to love. I know. Right. It's great. Yeah. Did you have a favorite breed of pigs? Whatever we get. Whatever you get. Yeah. <laughs> Just by the yeah. fingers. Yeah. We, we got the Mangalitsa pigs and oh, we were okay. talking before we came in about their, their meat and their fat. And like, it's incredible. You have to trim so much. The first so we ground sausage yeah. uh, yesterday and today, and there's so much fat that the sausage was almost white. We had to go cut up oh, some wow. of the hands and add to it. So like 80% of the pig went into the sausage. So we're oh losing out on a lot of the good stuff. But Wow. <laughs> yeah, That's a lot. It's, it's crazy how fat they are. Yeah. But last time uh, you were on the podcast... Um, talked about what's wrong with the advice of just doing it. Um, and you gave some tips on how to be brave and how to be smart. And we went into the concept a little bit about, you know, the how brave and smart work together and is one more important than the other and how someone can, you know, figure out when is the time for one or the other. Mm -hmm. And it was not long after that you made a pretty big life change. I did. Tell us yeah. a little about kind of what you what you went through there and maybe some of your thought processes behind the changes that you made. So what happened was I had been here at the farm since 2011, raising my kids. Well, obviously they were born way before that, but uh, raising the kids, homeschooling, doing everything full time from home, writing, podcast. I had a farmish kind of life, all of that. And then my youngest graduated from homeschool and I was kind of like, now I have to go out and do something else. 
and I'm going to make this big change and I'm just going to, I don't know. And then uh, my friends were looking for someone to join their office. Their business was booming and growing and they wanted to add somebody to their office. And so they said, would you like to take this position? And I was like, yeah, I think I'll do that. <laughs> And, and my husband, strikes. opportunity knocks and then we take it. And um, it was very exciting. My husband said, are, are you, are you sure you're going to have time to do the stuff you were doing before and do this? And I was like, yes, absolutely. I can do it all because why not? <laughs> you're laughing, right? <laughs> was this a full-time job? <laughs> Um, it started as part time and it was supposed to move to full time. So the intention okay. was, um, you know, try it out part time and then three months into it, it would move to full time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. yeah, so I don't know. Um, it it worked really well for a few months and then it didn't work very well anymore. <laughs> it, I, I think in the beginning it was, you know, that honeymoon period of uh, because I hadn't worked outside the home for 20 years. Right. And so going back to that, it was like, I have my little lunchbox and I'm getting in the car and I'm in the morning canoe and I'm in the afternoon right. and I'm listening Be to like the, everybody else, and... like everybody else. And I'm <laughs> living the life and I understand what people are talking about now. And, and there was just something really cool about that, about having like a story to share when everybody came home and gathered for the night. And now I have a story to share like I didn't have yeah. one before, but I have a different <laughs> story to share, you know, and, yeah. um, you know, after a few months of that, it there were just some things I was like, wait a second, you know, I, I can't do all the things that I thought I'd be able to do. I started to realize how many things I was doing that I, you know, because I think, I think go getters, like we, we don't realize everything we do in a day and we don't realize how much time it takes. Cause we're not writing down all the things that we're doing. Right. So mm -hmm. we, we just keep at it and we do it. And so when I thought I'll just I'll just add a job and I'll shove everything that I'm doing normally I'll just shove that into the the time I'm at home which I had no right. concept of what that was going to be <laughs> like yeah yeah every, everybody laughed at me it was an experience that I needed to have I learned a lot yeah. from it and uh, I'm currently still working there one day a week um, so I, I still have that that kind of out you know to leave the farm and do things but right. I have definitely learned that I built something here and. That's where I want to be. It kind of felt like yeah. the, the kid who who ran away from home, <laughs> you <know>? right? <laughs> you needed to go out and experience the world, and then realize you have to go back home because uh, mom has your blankie and your snacks, and you know, <laughs> that's kind of what it felt like. That's what I joke yeah. about it. But yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of funny. You put in your notes, ran away from home, and got a job, and <laughs> and I had to laugh at that one. But kind of, if you can, you know, somebody else who's in that position. Maybe, maybe they are a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home wife taking yeah. care of the farm, and they they get the feeling that they're missing out. Yeah. If you if you went back to a year or a year and a half ago, like leading into that time that that you decided to go out and get a job. Yeah. Are there are there things that you see that that uh, and I'm trying to figure out how to how to ask right, the question right. right. right would would you make the decision differently today or was that a necessary experience for you to to really realize what you've got and how can somebody right. else realize that without actually going through <laughs> the pain of that <laughs> um <clears throat> looking back i think what happened was a perfect storm of a bunch of stuff that came together. You know, my, mm. my kids grew up. I suddenly was like, okay, what do I do now? There was other stuff going on. It was just like, I really think it was a perfect storm of, okay, now you're going to go through this thing and you're going to figure it out. Um, I think I had kind of lost sight of what the path was and what I was, you know, like I, I knew where I wanted to go, but the path I was on to get there, I was like, this doesn't feel right. And I didn't know what to do with that. And so I gotcha. thought, I'll go get a job because that, that'll, that must be the answer. <laughs> you know, like yeah. Growing yeah, a farmer's kind of life and, and continuing to write books and continue to podcast, continuing to do YouTube and this whole thing that I've been doing for the last, you know, however many years. Um, I don't know. It just, it felt like if the path that I'm on isn't working to get to that goal, I, that must not be the right goal. You know, and, and you don't realize, well, how many different paths are there to get to that goal? You just need to find a different one. And so um, 
I, I do think that it was something I had to do though. I don't think that I would have, you know, I last June ish, you know, like so almost a year ago. Um, I, I feel like, yeah, like I had just lost my path. Like I, I didn't, I didn't know where I was going. And I think there, there are a lot of people who, who get to that point. And I don't even know when you get to that point, if you immediately realize that's your, the point you're at, you know, it's, things just feel all jumbled up and you're like, you can't even put your finger on it because looking back, I can put my finger on it and say, yeah, that's what was happening. But at the time, I don't, I don't think I had a clue that that's what was happening. So yeah, I think going through all of that was what you look back and you're like, Oh yeah, I get it now. <laughs> I get what we were yeah. going through. There, so yeah, it, you kind of see a lot of people that, that reach a point or like a, like a breaking point of a previous life. Like for you in that instance, it was your youngest son graduating from yeah. homeschool and yeah. it's like, okay, now it's a new kind of life. Like right. what's, what am I doing now? Right. For a lot of people, it's, you know, maybe they set a business goal or they set a financial goal or they set a whatever goal that might be. Like, I want to, I want to make a million dollars. Yeah. And once they reach that, once they've made the million dollars, then they're like, is this all? What else is there? What's next? And and you see them yeah. kind of going through thrashing around, basically trying to, trying to find their way. Yeah. How can somebody, how can somebody find their way or, or set their path in such a way that when changes like that do come along, <laughs> they, they don't have to, to, to beat around the bush to try to figure out who they are now at this point right. because something's changed. I, I think that's an excellent question. I think some, <laughs> it's, it's a great question. Um, I'm sorry, I'm I throwing think, all the hardballs at you. <laughs> I know. Uh, but that's good. Um, I think now going forward, I think just having lived longer and had more experiences, I think you, the more experiences you have like that, the more you will get to those places in life. You're like, oh, this is what's happening. I, mm -hmm. I've been here before. This is what's happening. Um, step back. <laughs> you know, Like, um, and, and whatever it is for you, sometimes it's, it's having the right person to talk to. Sometimes it's being in the right community to, and asking the right questions of the right people. Sometimes it's saying, you know what, for a month, I'm not dealing with this. I'm, I'm stepping out of it. I, you know, I need a new perspective. Um, but that's a good question. Cause I, I think if, if we could figure that out, you know, and have like a checklist of wait a second, this is right. I, Wouldn't that be nice? Like, man, that would be check. magical. I know <laughs> we'd all be millionaires. We'll, we'll write that book together, Ken. And there you go. <laughs> We'll have it all figured out. <laughs> it's it's kind of funny you mentioned that. I, I saw a comment the other day, and it was probably somebody made it up, but somebody said, wrote, my friend wrote a book about how to become a millionaire, but he needs help publishing it. <laughs> it's like, maybe he should read the book. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> right. So earlier last year, you started the Farmish Papers. Yeah. Um, which is a snail mail news newsletter, which is awesome, yep. by the way. My wife loves it. I love it. I love the little notes that are that you yeah. send every time. So that's Those are super fun. Cool. <laughs> little uh, personal touch. I love that. Yeah. Um, you had the podcast, the website, all the blog, like all the things that you do. Yeah. Then you started a job. <laughs> yeah. See now I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> what what had to give in all of that? Like did did you just not sleep? Or or I, like <laughs> I, I didn't do the podcast for a few months. Yeah. Um, just didn't do that. I, I wasn't writing for the first part of that. Um, like I just, it, it was so weird to me to leave the house, be gone for eight hours, 10 hours, whatever it was, and come home and then look at, you know, cause I'm an early morning person. So I get up about four or five. So by nine o'clock at night, I'm like, I am done. <laughs> I am yeah. done. And so I would get home at six o'clock or six 30 or whenever. Okay. Now in this little chunk of time, Oh my gosh, <laughs> I have to try and do all this stuff. And at first I was like, I can do it. Cause you have no clue how long it takes you to do anything. Right. And, and then it was apparent that I couldn't. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it was so, it was so weird to have that experience of like admitting I cannot do it all. 
I can't do it all. Mm-hmm. And I think that's important to talk about because I think sometimes in some communities, we can do it all. We can do all the things. You just, if you want to do it, if you want it hard enough, you can do it. And yes, but no. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, and there's a point where you have to go, no, um, I have to make some choices here and figure out what I'm going to do. And so for a while, I just wasn't doing all the things. I still did the farmish papers, um, obviously, because there were subscribers who were paying for that. So yeah, that still they, had to happen. And, and they want to get what they pay for. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, that was that was the focus. And then um, it, it was interesting because it really, after a while, it sort of drove my um, creativity isn't the right word, but productivity. That's what I'm looking for. Mm. Um, and I actually started writing more. Gotcha. And I, I, and I think it was how I dealt with the frustration of going, I don't have time to do this. And so I just poured all my free time into writing. Okay. But then what happens is I get home from work. Okay. Now I'm writing. There's still a whole bunch of stuff that's not getting done. You know what I'm saying? Like, and the, and the farm, I think what the, what the, the big thing was, was the farm became the afterthought. And once I got to that, you know, it was just, I'd come home, I'd throw food at the animals. It's like, okay, you're all alive. All right. I'm going in the house to, yeah, you know, <laughs> and, and living you're that, life. Me, <laughs> and, and living no that life and being like, <sighs> is this what I wanted to do? And, and for a while I felt guilty because I thought there's so many people, this is, this is what they do. You know, yeah. they work full time and they have a farm and, and this is their life and this is their normal. And so. I felt really guilty that I was thinking I can't do this. So I'm thinking what's wrong with me that I can't. Um, but that, but then it was that whole thing. Understanding that, you know, my husband and I built this life here at the farm. We bought the farm for a reason. We made intentional choices about everything we've done here for a reason. You know, we built this life for a reason. And then to raise our kids up and get them to adulthood. Okay. Now they're off doing their own thing. I went and made this choice where I purposely made everything more difficult for no reason. Right. It was one thing if it, you know, if we would have been in a financial situation or there would have been something that came up where it's like, okay, now you need to go out and like get a job and do this thing. And the farm needs to take a break. That would have been totally different. We would have done that because I believe that you can do the things you need to do when you need to do them, but we didn't have to. So that's, that's what the, that's what the, the rub was, I guess, was that I was out doing this and making things very stressful for myself and changing things within the household. And, and there was no reason, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I, I like that you said, or, or you kind of brought out, you know, that I can't do this. You know, I see all these other people doing it. Why can't I do it? And it's, I don't yeah. think it's necessarily... I don't think we should be asking ourselves, why can't I do this? But yeah. should I even be doing this? Yeah. It would maybe be the question yeah. that, that we need to ask ourselves sometimes. And, you know, there's a lot of things that I want to do. And I'm like, why can't I do this? <laughs> and it's like, can I figure out a way? Or, you know, we were talking before the break, I was a couple weeks ago, and the guy introduced a new way of thinking to me, which should have been obvious. He said, you don't have to do everything. It's like when you run into an obstacle, it's like, who's going to help me? How much will it cost? And how long will it take? Like, yeah, you don't have to do everything. Yeah. There's other people out there that specialize in those things. So it it was just kind of an interesting way to just a shift. And, and I'm sure I've thought of that, but when he mentioned that, I'm like, Yeah. yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah. What, what would you say to, or what did you learn about yourself working through (laughs) all of that, being off the farm, wanting to be back on the farm and realizing that you didn't want to push through like a lot of other people that you see do that do. What did I learn? Um, (laughs) You know, my, um, my aunt said sometimes I was talking to her about this and she said, sometimes we learn more about ourselves in the things that we don't want to do than from Mm -hmm. the things that we do want to do. And it's, and I think that 
think that explains it so well when I when I'm sitting on the farm and I've got this magical life that I really feel is very magical and it's peaceful and wonderful and I'm out in the barn and I'm in the garden and I'm you know and it's hard work it's physical work we have a lot of stuff going on on the farm but there's just like there's this peace about it you know but I think when you always have that peace you forget you have that peace and I think sometimes when you're tossed into those whether you're tossed into them or you choose to, to go <laughs> or you into them, you know, <laughs> I think you learn different things about yourself and, mm. you know, that you learn what was peaceful and what you did like about it. And then what you thought you were going to find in the, in the grass on the other side, you know, whatever, you know, cause the grass is greener on the other side, but no. Yeah. Um, yeah. What did you, I, what did you miss most? about the change after, after you realized, like after you started that other job, mm -hmm. what did you miss the most about how your life was previously? <laughs> um, it, it was really weird to have a boss. <laughs> um, it, Letty it was, says Amy missed so much spending so much time with Poofy Kitty. <laughs> I did miss Poofy Kitty. She's such a helper. That cat follows me everywhere on the farm. Um, <clears throat> let's see. It it was it was strange to have a boss. It was strange to have someone else saying, "This is what you need to do." It was really strange not being in charge of my own time. I think that's the thing that I hated the most. And the job that I that I took was very flexible. You know, if it was you can't come in today, come in tomorrow. It was it was flexible in how we put the hours together. If you wanted to work noon to eight o'clock at night, you can do that. Like you could pick your own hours. So it was flexible in that way. But it was always having that hanging over my head. I have somewhere else to be. Right. And there's this eight or ten hours or six hours, you know, whatever the day was that I'm not in charge of me. I'm not in charge of my time. And that really bothered me that was yeah. the hardest thing <laughs> maybe I, i'm just a control that. freak <laughs> <laughs> well i don't know i think we all like to be in control of our time and you know i'm i'm self-employed i don't have a boss other than me yeah, yeah. but i have a lot of bosses because i still have to answer to my clients and right. sometimes i'm like i just don't want to <laughs> go today because I want to do my own stuff. Like I have things here. I can I have work on my too. house. Yes. I yes. can, I can mess with the animals. Yep. I, there's a billion things I can find to do yep. here where I want to be yep. doing other things that I want to do. I don't want to go build your deck today. I'm sorry, sir. Yeah. I'll see you next year. <laughs> yeah. But that doesn't pay the bills all the time. Right. So. I did find it was interesting how much, especially if there was a lull in what we were doing, I would immediately be thinking of what I could be doing at home because there's mm. so much stuff I could be doing at home. And so yes. that was frustrating because if I was away from home, I wanted to be productive and busy and so busy all the time. So I didn't have to think about right. anything else. And as soon as it got slow, I was like, oh, I could be at home doing <laughs> this and this and this and this. And then I'd get frustrated. So yeah, there, there's nothing worse than or. There, I'm sure there are worse things, but as far <laughs> as jobs go, there's not a lot worse than when you have, when you're used to um, divvying out or taking care of your own time, being your yeah. own boss of time. Yeah. And you go work for somebody else. There's nothing worse than having that lull in time or waiting on them. Like, yeah. I'm going to sit here and hurry up and wait when I right. could be doing. <laughs> that thing i know i'm getting paid yes, yes. that's not the point i know, <laughs> I know. <the> money. <laughs> oh, yes exactly wow. the other the other weird thing is though that having a boss <laughs> i was like yes you're my boss but you're just my boss mm. which was different than what it would have been 20 years ago and i don't know if that's we're in a financial position a different financial position now so it's not like oh i have to make my boss happy because you know yeah I can't do it, you know and not that i'm a bad employee i'm a great employee but like just you're just my boss like you just <laughs> You're not in you charge of me. You're, not my control life. me. <laughs> you're like, you're not in charge of my life. So that that was I think an interesting, you know, flavor to bring to the <laughs> Yeah, that for was sure. Different this time around than <laughs> when was the last time that you actually had a an hourly job? Oh, that would have been that might be uh, betraying two thousand two. Okay. My awesome. oldest was born in two thousand three and uh yeah. 2002. Yeah. 
That's super cool. <laughs> you, in today's world, you did not see a lot of stay at home moms, even, even moms that, you know, work from home. Like there's, that does not happen a lot. I love seeing that. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was, I always wanted to do that. So yeah, I'm very lucky that that worked out and that yeah. uh, my husband was on board with that. So. Yeah. Awesome. So you took a break from the podcast and writing and your blog. And when I say writing, I mean, actually writing books, right? Yeah. Like you, yeah. you took a break from all of that. Yeah. And so many different things. How did that affect the business you had built or the, how did, how did it affect all the farmish life? I didn't no. realize that stepping away from it was going to affect it as much as it did, because a, a lot of people will say, well, it's, not, it's passive income. You know, it, it's it's there and it will float while you're not there because it exists online. And yeah, but no, <laughs> no, <laughs> it, if if you're like I, I was surprised at how many emails I got from people who were not happy hmm. that I had, um, you know, decided to take a break, but I, supportive, like that's great. You go do what you need to do. I hope that you figure out what you need to figure out. But man, we are bummed out that you're <laughs> not hurry doing back. this. Like, figure out. You hurry back. back. <laughs> like, I hope you come back. So, um, yeah, it 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 was surprising to me. Uh, and again, I think it's like you you don't you don't realize how much you're doing, or I didn't realize how much I was doing. And and so then to step away from it, I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal, and it was. So I was like, mm -hmm. oh wait, <laughs> <laughs> I got to go yeah. back to this. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. How long did it take to, to jump back in to like, to bring things up to where they had been pre? Um, I'm thinking, cause I took a break from the podcast for like three months, I think. Was it three months, four months? See, I, time just runs together. For me now, but, um, yeah. you know, it didn't take that that long maybe a month or two it was like oh we're back into the swing of things and then things you know kind of pick up and amy's back and she's writing and she you know we see her places and um published a book which was you know odd to publish a book when i'd been gone it was you know, this book just came out with me i'm gonna finish right? this you know it's like <laughs> i was using my uh frustration in my i don't know what's going on to let's just put that in a book it, it was the oddest thing i don't mm -hmm. yeah so <laughs> i don't know i had a comment um Joker cools. I'm not sure who that is. So about the only thing I miss about having a job is the social aspect of it. Even though we're only five miles off payment and six and change off a major highway, they get no visitors. Mm. And then he also said, and I miss the paycheck. <laughs> there is that. <laughs> uh, yeah. For the social aspect, Letty said, Letty Lou, I've hooked up with a local mom group, which helps with my socialization as well as the kids. It's tough as a stay at home mom, but finding others helps. Although I do sometimes miss the paychecks <laughs> coming in regularly, but I found some side work to do. So if you can find things that, that occupy your time that do bring in some money that yeah. kind of taps into things that you love doing, I think that goes a long way in, in bringing you peace. Cause even, even oh, yeah. having a job, if you're not tapped into doing things that you enjoy doing, like that just becomes a drag and that's why oh, yeah. people don't last long in a job anymore. Yeah. Yeah. How, how did you did that play a part in the job that you took at all? Like, was it at, was it at least work you enjoyed doing or was it things that were? Monotonous? Oh, I didn't mind doing it. It was all it was office stuff. It was it was stuff that I was doing in my own, you know, in my own business. Right. It was all it was I didn't have to think about it. It was easy. So um, I didn't mind that. But the other thing is that. um Right after I took the job, my husband uh, had a little mishap with his motorcycle and broke four of his ribs. And so right when I had taken this job, he then was off work recovering for that. So he was home and I was working. So we saw each other when I got home. Then when he went back to work on light duty, we were actually working the same hours and the same days. When he mm. went back to his regular hours, we were working opposite shifts. And that's so when every saw each other on the way through the door. Yeah. And that's like, he went back to his normal because he's always worked nights and weird hours and whatever. And, and then I was still working this regular like day. <laughs> like, 
And wow. that's what it was like, what is going on? <laughs> and it, it became apparent to me, it's like, wait a second, we created this whole life where he has this crazy job where he works these weird hours and I'm home and I'm working from home and doing stuff at home. So we can work around that when you're both working that nope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was another one of the things I was like, mm, what are we doing? <laughs> Sometimes you really have to sit down and figure it out. And on the note of what are we doing? You you had a comment in the notes that you sent me. It says sometimes you have to back up in order to move forward. Yeah. We spend so much time doing what we're doing or we get tunnel vision about it that we yeah. forget why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. At what point in there did the why come back to you? And what is that why for you? I think it was around the time when my husband and I weren't seeing each other at all. That's what yeah. I was like, wait a hot minute. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is, and, and again, it was one of those things where it's like, if there are people that live this life, they work opposite shifts of their spouse, you know, and that's normal yeah. for them. And that's just what they do, but we don't have to, that's what it, you know, that's how I got through the guilt of it. And that's how, you know, I talked to a few people and they're like, but you don't have to, like you built your life a certain way. You, you got your kids grown up and you got to this point where everybody's like, yay, the kids are grown up. Now we can go do these things and have this free life. And now you're like, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it, yeah. And it, it's just, I, I remember standing in the shower and thinking like, what are we doing? That This is just coming back to that life we built. And it, it was, so many things we did here were intentional, you know, and remembering, wait a second, like you snap back to reality. You're like, yeah. wait a second. Yeah. Like we don't have to do this. If we had to, we could, but we don't have to. Right. So did, did you feel yourself change at all in taking on a job and, and feeling some of the stresses, some of the time and all of that, like, what changed yeah. about yourself and how do you, how do you feel differently now that you're mostly back into <laughs> what you love doing? I was not a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I was, I was not a nice person. Um, cause I was stressed out and cause there was so many emotions like, you know, from the guilt of I should be able to do this and you know, the frustration that I couldn't. And then just, um, yeah, there, there were some, <laughs> There was some dark days there. I was I was not a happy person. And I was like, and I thought that I would work through that. And you just come out on the other end and we just keep doing the job thing. And this is just what we do for the rest of our life. And then mm -hmm. I'm like, wait, it, but, but why? We <laughs> built our life to be different. What are we doing? You know? And and I, th I think there was like a part where you had to be okay with saying, yep, you're right. We did build like accepting that and being okay with that. We built our life different and that's okay that we did that. And it is what it is. And some people aren't going to get it. You know, they're going to be like, oh, Amy went out and got a job for how many months? And now she's, you know, like working there, what, one day a week? Okay. <laughs> you know, some people are going to be like, wow, it must be nice. Yeah, it is. I don't know what it to tell nice. you. It is nice. You can do it too. <laughs> you can do it too. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing I don't get about people with that attitude. Like, yeah, it is nice. You can do the same yeah. thing. If I can do yeah. it, if he can do it, if I can do it, anybody can do it. I don't, I don't know about other people. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. What, what about labels that we get caught up in? Um, I'm sure maybe, maybe you had some of that going into the job, you know, better or a gardener or, you know, whatever label I'm a writer, author, yeah. podcaster. And that, uh, that changes when you, yeah. I don't know. Like when you, when you make a switch that changes, how can you work around that? Like what, how did that affect you? It was hard because I, I had built up this whole thing where I am Amy Dingman, the homesteader. <laughs> mm -hmm. I am Amy Dingman, the author. I am Amy, you know, all the things that I am. And then I went and got this job and I was busy and then I, I wasn't doing any of those things. Okay. So who am I? Right. Yeah. So now I'm like, who am I? I, I didn't know. And, and so I, I think the way that I got around this, I was talking with a friend of mine um, and, and we were talking about how sometimes we get caught up in all these labels that we put on ourselves and all these, these ways that we want to define all the little boxes that we fit into. And really <laughs> your label, if, you, if you're going to live with a label or operate under a label, your label is your name. You know, like I am Amy Dingman. 
I'm, mm -hmm. I'm Amy and that's who I am. And that's, that's all that I am. You know what I'm saying? It, and that can be so many things. And, and when you operate under that, it's like, okay, this is what I'm doing today. And it's part of who I am. And so I, th I think that's, that's what I had to just get okay with. It's not, I can be Amy Dingman, the homesteader, or I can be Amy Dingman, the singer. I can be Amy Dingman, the writer. I can be the whatever, you know, but it's all Amy Dingman. And so instead of focusing on all those little boxes, you know, focus high level up here, it's, it's just you, you're just you. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. do you put any thought into who Amy Dingman wants to be and the type of person or, or how you want to show up in the world or like how, how does that play into the life that you live and the things you do on a day-to-day -day basis? I think, I think I've just decided that I want to be just genuine, like in whatever I'm doing, I just want to be real and I want to be honest and, you know, talk about how crazy it was that I went and got a job. And then how many months later I'm like, meh, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> That's not yeah. the life for me, but being <laughs> willing to talk about it and just be like, yeah, okay. Because so many people do stuff that other people could learn from or other people could be like, yeah, I did that too. Or wow, what'd you learn from that experience? And there's so many people that don't talk about it though. Cause you know, they want to put on this, <laughs> this great front or, you know, like I planned that out and it worked perfectly. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 So often when we set out to make a plan and <laughs> Sometimes the plan works, but usually <laughs> it, it explodes in your face and then yeah. you have to pick up the pieces and be like, all right, right. Now how can I put this thing back together <laughs> and make it look like I meant to do that? <laughs> yeah, totally meant that. Totally that was on purpose. Meant <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, man. So what's, what's up with, for you moving forward as you get back to, you know, you, you've been back to what, four days or one day a week working for the, for the other business yep. again. Yeah what do you, what kind of projects do you have moving forward? Are you re-implementing all the things you were doing before or yeah. Talk a little about that. So like uh, with Farmish, just going back to the podcast, I've got a bunch of books I'm working on, <laughs> like, because I just can't stop writing. I don't know. Um, really getting big into YouTube and making videos. Cause I love making videos. I love editing videos. That is my theater nerd coming out <laughs> because I was a theater kid. I was, oh, I was going to be in musical theater. That was my life dream, my life goal. Um, so <laughs> doing video, you know, gets me back to do a little bit of that, but um it just just so much and then on the farm you know we're just we're going back to all the stuff that we didn't get to do last year because i was gone <laughs> and you know my husband was recovering for how many months yeah. you know from breaking his ribs and there was so much stuff we didn't get to do last year and so much stuff that we wanted to add last year you know like add rabbits to the farm and build a smoke house and like we have so much fence we need to repair from storms that happened and just there's mm. so much stuff that didn't get done last year and so yeah, it feels like, you know, we took a step backwards or like a whole bunch backwards, you know, um, you know, to, to be able to step back and look and go, OK, what are we doing here? And then make a make a plan, a plan right? <laughs> to, to see how that works out. But I feel I feel way better about that. So. Mm -hmm. Joker Cools, I'm not sure exactly how to say that. He said he might have to start running moonshine to keep the bills paid. Yes. So I told him to send some my way. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Perfect. I'm in Kentucky, so I'm sure I have access to it around these hills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what would you say to somebody who is right now facing that same, I don't know, call it a midlife crisis, call it a <laughs> yes. change like we're you know, kind of what you went through with your kids graduating and now yeah. they're off with their own jobs and now you got to find who you are yeah. for somebody else who is facing a moment like that. Yeah. Where should they turn or what should they do? Do you have any books that they should read to help them work, find who they are or podcasts about that? Or what would be the the thing to do there? I think and, and I know that's a tough one that that may be impossible to answer. <laughs> oh man, I think you know it was just I think what I figured out actually, I think what was I think what I wish someone would have told me is when I got to that point where I was like, "Oh, something needs to be different here because kids graduated. Okay, now who are you?" 
you're still the same person you are and nothing needs to be different. There, there is, yeah. there is nothing here that says you have to go out and do something completely different just to mark this phase in your life. Because you know what, your kids growing up and going off to do their own thing, that's different enough that that's what it is. And, and you just continue on. It doesn't have to be this big dramatic, I have to go do something, you know? <laughs> and, and sometimes I think there's, there's probably a lot of times in our life where we, we make it way more difficult than it needs to be. And it, it's all up here. There was nobody in my life that was telling me, you need to go out and get a job. You need to go do something different. You need to, there was not one single person in my life that was saying that. In fact, apparently there was a bunch of people in my life that when I said, I'm going to go get a job, they were like, what? <laughs> they, what didn't tell me, <laughs> they didn't tell me that. <laughs> Yeah. They didn't tell me that till after when I was like, I don't think this is working. They're like, we were like counting the days <laughs> to see how long this was going to work. Cause we were like, what are you doing? Um, but yeah, it like, it, it, it doesn't, we don't have to make it different. We don't have to make it difficult. Like things are difficult enough. You know, you don't, you don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to make it more difficult. So yeah, I don't know, but it, awesome. it was interesting because I, um, Often on my podcast, I would talk about, you know, it's all the things you can do on your homestead. You know, you, you can do all these wonderful things. And, you know, if you had, you, you make the time, you can do it. And, and what I learned when, when you go out and you work a job away from home and you come home after your day of work, the last damn thing you want to do is <laughs> like anything in your, anything. in your mind. And I did not understand that. So, in some ways, I feel like going out and doing this gave me perspective I didn't have before because I remember coming home from work and it had been a crappy day at work and we had to put tea posts in the ground when we got home by our apple trees and the ground was so dry and we're trying to get these tea posts into the ground <laughs> and they're bending and I am cursing a blue streak and I'm so frustrated and I'm looking at this tea post and I'm like, I understand now. I understand why when I'm on my podcast talking about you could just burp, 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 if you people are like, what? <laughs> you know, because like when I was in a totally different frame of mind when I would come home, like I didn't want to do anything. The last thing I want to go do is now go work in the garden and weed for like I don't want to do that. Yeah. So it was sure. it was a good perspective that was given to me. So you know Hopefully. I <laughs> Hopefully that's a lesson that, uh, or shift that you can hang on to for a while. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, so, I will remember this time in my life. <laughs> this is memorable. <laughs> for sure. Uh, over here in the comment, he says it's pronounced jo Joker, please. Yes. I think it's Greek. I don't know anything about Greek. And he said he's of English and Mennonite heritage. So that's yes. interesting. I'm Mennonite background as well. So I don't know how you found me. But awesome. Glad you're here in the comments. <laughs> Joker, please. Never heard that. Joker, one, please. So. Joker. I guess I, I could have said that one of these times, couldn't I? Because I, I know him. So, yes. yeah. Joker, please. Joker, oh, okay. please. Awesome. Yes. Cool. Yes. Super. So, where can somebody find you to follow the awesomeness that is Amy Dingman and uh, <laughs> everything that you have going on? Find your books. Um, you do both yeah. fiction and nonfiction. Is that right? I do. Yeah. If so, you go I mean, to. What, uh, what don't you do? <laughs> Lots of stuff. I cannot reach anything very high on the shelf because I'm very short. <laughs> so that's why I'm very glad that everybody in my house is much taller than me. Um, but yeah, you can find most of my stuff at uh, my website, a farmish kind of life.com. Just go in the menu. You're going to find anything you need to know there. That's where you can find uh, the books that I've written. You can find links to my podcast. You can find links to the farmish papers, the monthly snail mail newsletter. Um, yeah. I highly recommend you go sign up for that. It's super fun. I love doing it. It's super fun. It makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we got to have those things in life that make us happy. Yes. If you don't have, yeah. if you don't have at least the one little thing that you can look forward to in the week, then yeah. I don't know, do something different with your life. Yeah. That's all I can say. Find, and it, find it's, a different path. <laughs> it's funny because people are like, oh, I'm so excited. You sent, you know, some of this newsletter and I usually put little personal notes in them and oh, it's very fun. And they're like, I just love this. And I'm like, you don't understand how much I love this. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's awesome. So it's yeah. it's super cool when, when it's a win-win for all yes. sides. That's yes. Cool. Definitely. Well, I will, uh, I'll definitely have all those links in the show notes. So <laughs> he's talking about, uh, you know, you swearing, pounding in the fence post. Come chase cows. Yes. Oh, 
yeah. Um, I have a story about cows. We had cows on the farm once, and we did not have proper fencing in. We just had an electric oh. fence with a little tiny solar shocker, and it was like yeah. way out in the back 20, way back that way. And uh, the cows kept getting out, and I could not figure out why they kept getting out, going through the fence. And one day I went back there, and they were out again. Well, my wife hears my truck just RPMs. <laughs> I was roaring through the field. And it was not a good day. When I, I got bet. back to the house, I said, "We're gonna go get a trailer. We're taking <laughs> loading the cows, and we are taking them to my uncle's house. We are not having cows. <laughs> not till we have fence again. I hate cows it's when they get out of fences. Yeah, uh, yeah. But. Adventure time. That's what it is. <laughs> Adventure time. <laughs> yep. And Lady also said she loves the personal note from Amy each week. Aww. That's super cool. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. I will have all those links in the show notes when the podcast comes out. Any last words for the audience? Not for life, for just for the audience, for the podcast. <laughs> just for the Famous audience. last words, Amy. Come on. Famous last words. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Apparently, this podcast episode is yes, but no. <laughs> <laughs> yes but no <laughs> yes but no there you know you, you just gotta you gotta figure out what you want to do and sometimes it requires uh taking a step backwards and looking at stuff and being okay with doing that being brave enough to do that to yeah. step backwards and say this might not work even if you're really sure it's going to <laughs> realize it might not but that's okay yep. awesome yeah. well thank you for that yeah <laughs>